Hey there, second grade. Uh, this is our scholastic news for today. Its focus is going to be on some wild weather that is affected by a volcano eruption. So it's pretty interesting. And it's things that we've talked about. We've talked about volcanoes. We've talked about wild weather and how it affects the earth. So first I want to remind you how to log into scholastic news. It might have kept your password from before, but if it didn't, you just go to login. I am a student. And the password is capital B A T H number two bath two. Hit sign in. And we're going to do this the volcano that stopped summer. Your assignment today is the back page. You can just number it. Um, you're going to look at a map. I'll pause there so you can hit pause and go through it and answer the questions. Um, we're going to review weather a little bit, and I'll explain why. There is a wild weather video, and I want you to take a look at it. We read a story on wild weather, blizzards and tornadoes and hurricanes and things like that, and talked about how to be safe during the wild weather. Well, you're not going to believe this, but back in the 1800s, there was a volcano eruption, and it caused a huge cloud around the planet. Instead of having warm sunshine and summer weather, it actually snowed. So the eruption affected the weather and the climate at that time. So it's very interesting. So we're going to review with the video. If you decide to get on yourself, you can look at the vocabulary words. And you can play the game, the Volcano That Stopped Summer game. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started. With the video. Wild weather. Most of the time, weather is pretty ordinary. Sunny or cloudy, breezy or calm. But every so often, weather can get wild. Shut the windows. Go in the basement. A tornado is coming. It is one of the most dangerous kinds of weather. Thunder clouds meet strong winds and form into a huge, swirling, funnel-shaped cloud. When tornadoes touch the ground, their winds can lift heavy objects up into the sky. An umbrella won't help much in this storm. It's a hurricane. A hurricane is a big rainstorm with strong winds. Hurricane winds blow at least 74 miles per hour. That's faster than a car on a highway. Hurricanes can cause big problems, like floods. Water fills the streets. People may need boats to get around. Houses and cars can be damaged. Wild weather doesn't have to mean wet weather. When there is a drought, there isn't any rain for a long time. Crops dry up. Rivers and streams get low. It can be hard for animals to find a drink. There can also be dangerous heat waves. That's when the temperature is unusually hot for a long period of time. In a heat wave, it's important to stay in the shade or stay inside and drink lots of water. In winter, one kind of extreme weather is a blizzard. A blizzard is a really big snowstorm. Many feet of snow fall very quickly. Powerful winds shake trees and knock down power lines and whiteout conditions make it impossible to see just a few feet in front of you. Lucky for us, weather is pretty ordinary most of the time. Weather forecasts let people know what the weather will be like in the days or even weeks ahead. That way, they can be prepared if wild weather is on the way. Right here we go. I like to do the on level. You can do either um, one if you want to research your own scholastic news. The volcano that stopped summer. Two hundred years ago, a volcano called Mount Tambora erupted. All over the world, the weather became cold and stormy. In North America, people called it. The year without a summer. The year with no summer. 
In 1815, one volcano changed the weather around the world. As you read, think about the different ways the volcano changed the weather. Imagine that it's the first day of summer. For months, you've been looking forward to playing in the warm sunshine. You can't wait to go for a swim. But you can't do that this year. It's snowing outside. It sounds strange, but that's what happened to kids across the United States in 1816. Instead of a sunny summer, they got a cold and gloomy season. How did this happen? A volcano erupts. The story started in 1815 in the country of Indonesia. A volcano called Mount Tambora erupted. It exploded. Red-hot lava poured down its sides. A huge cloud of ash, gases, and dust shot into the air. The cloud was so big and thick, it blocked the sun. It kept light and heat from reaching the earth. A thick cloud spreads. For months, wind spread the cloud across the planet. As it spread... It changed the weather around the world. This enormous cloud made the world's weather colder and stormier. The temperature dropped by about five degrees around the world. A colder world. In China, the cold temperatures killed trees, rice plants, and water buffalo. In the United States, the crops that farmers were growing froze in their fields. There wasn't much food for people to buy, so the food that was left became really expensive. A lot of people didn't get enough to eat. Many people in the northeastern United States decided to leave their frozen homes behind and move west. By 1816, the weather in the United States still hadn't warmed up. It snowed that June. On the 4th of July, it was so cold that people had to stay inside and sit by their fireplaces. That's why people called 1816 the year without a summer. A surprise invention. One good thing did come out of that cold year. Some people say the bicycle was invented because of the weather. Why? Back then, most people rode horses, but horses had to eat, and their food had become really expensive. People needed a way to get around that wouldn't cost so much. So a man invented the bicycle. It was a new, faster way to travel. Plus, you didn't need to feed it. Finally, the dark cloud of ash and dust started to blow away. The sun shone again. The weather went back to normal. The year without a summer was finally over. By Blair Rainsford A cloud of dust and ash spreads through the sky. The first bicycle. So friends, this was about 204 years ago. Um... It's a very long time ago. I can't imagine in June, in summer, that it was snowing. But this is the way um, the environment is affected, the weather is affected, people, animals, and plants are all affected by the change of weather. And taking a look at the back, um, I know Mrs. Reeves has talked to you in social studies about continents. Our world is divided up into water and land, mostly water. She's taught you a lot about landforms as well. Our land is divided up into seven continents. We have um, North America, where we live. The United States are here, is here. Canada's up here. And Mexico is connected down here. This whole piece is North America. And the United States is right in the middle. South America, with countries like um, Peru, Uruguay, all kinds of countries inside of it. Europe, um, some countries inside of Europe is um, London, England, 
England, the country, the city of London. Um, hmm, Germany, we talked about during the Christmas around the world, all kinds of countries. Asia is another continent. China, Japan, Korea, all different kinds of countries are inside of Asia. Africa, also many countries inside. South Africa's down here. Um, we have Australia. Okay. And Antarctica is not really shown. So, taking a look at this map, a world changing eruptions. This map shows what happened around the world when Mount Tambora erupted. Northwestern United States, snow fell during the summer. Said a lot of people even started to move. In Indiana, which is right next to us in Ohio, many people moved from the northeast to state like Indiana so they could farm. In Europe, cold weather killed many of the crops. People didn't have as much to eat and what was there got really expensive. In China, the cold weather also killed crops. Here's where the volcano was, all the way over here. Look compared to us. It crossed the world here, but it affected us. It affected everyone. Indonesia, is where Mount Tambora was located, between Asia and Australia there. So the first question is, where did the volcano erupt? Your answer is going to be China, Indiana, or Indonesia. Number two, go ahead and write number two on your paper. What happened in China? So I see that word China. That's a key word I can come find up here. See what happened and then write down which is the correct answer. Number three, where did many people from the northeastern United States move to? I remember reading something about movement, and I know the United States is over in here. You can find the answer there. And number four, in which two places did cold weather kill crops? So I'm going to look for these keywords, kill crops, and then look at these different captions to see the answer. So I hope you learned something new today. I definitely did. I always do with these scholastic news and I like how it has some science and some social studies and current events as well. So please feel free to visit scholastic news and look at any of the old issues and any of the recent ones as well. Thanks guys.